All right, welcome back to our React newsletter uh, tutorial. Um, we're going to be working on our handle send email function here. Um, so let's jump right into it. Um, so the first thing you want to do is, um, first off, this function right here is the same function that is called when you click send. Okay, so um, this function is going to take in the email and first of all, let's get rid of this console log. What do we want to do when you first, um, when you first hit that submit button? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to, um, have that little loading spinning icon thing. So let's call the handle loading state function and let's set the flag to true. All right, so now if I just type in an email and watch my, uh, my flag here change, there you go. That's setting to true. All right. So that's working. The next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and, um, let's start handling our Xeos call. Um, we need to, um, we're going to be using, uh, um, we're going to have a, a separate project, a backend project, and it's going to have its own little, uh, its own separate URL. And <clears throat> it's going to be another localhost project that's going to be on localhost 8080. So I set up this, this const variable here and it's just exporting it. And, um, in a, in a real world application, you would, you would do some type of, you would have some type of, um, environment variable or something set in the project um, and if you're in dev it would use this this URL if you're in prod you use this URL if you're in staging it might use another URL um, but in this case it's just it's just a dummy project so um, I just created this this API const here I'm exporting it and um, I'm exporting it into this index file right here so with that, that allows me to do this. We're going to import our API URL from helpers, and that's it. All right. Next thing we need to do, let's uh, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and import our uh, our Axios library. You can't make an Axios call without Axios. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and call Axios. So we're making a post call. So post, and we're gonna be making the post call to that API URL. All right, and the name of our endpoint is gonna be called subscribe. Okay, we need to pass in the body. This is a post call, pass in the body. The body is going to be the email. All right. We'll handle this subscribing point in a future video. Um, that's going to be our node route. That's going to take in this email here. All right, let's go ahead and finish up our promises here. So let's handle our den promise. It's going to have a response. Let's also catch any errors we get here. Okay, so I want to uh, explain something here before I continue. Um, what I mean catch this error, what I mean is if I make a call to the node route, that, the restify route that we're going to make, and that thing returns anything but a 200 okay, it's going to be caught in this, this catch block right here. Now, we're also making another API call to MailChimp. So what that means is I can make an API call and to my Restify route and that'll return a 200 okay, but the MailChimp API can return a, four, a 401, which means you're not um, authorized to use that, that, that route. Bad API key, bad, bad token or whatever. So 
that error won't be caught in this block right here. So we have to in our we have to make sure we handle if the API if the MailChimp API returns a bad error. So we have to do that on the server side node and also we need to do a check here. Because otherwise you'll end up um you'll end up throwing a success message or success flag to the end user when they actually were not subscribed. Okay, so let's go ahead and handle our um, our bad uh, catch block here. Okay, so let's let's make sure that we are first off turning off that notification flag. I'm gonna set false. All right, so we also need a way to notify the user if there is an error. So we are um, we're gonna create a helper function called notify here, and this helper function is going to utilize Ant Design's um, notification library or method here, components. So we're going to use this. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we need to um, uh, import that notification uh, 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 function from Ant Design. In this case, it's a uh, this one's a uh, an object. All right, this one is we're just gonna call it const um, notify, and we're gonna have a type. We're gonna have a message and also a description. Arrow function. All right, and we're also going to export default notify all right okay first thing we need to do is um, uh, you saw earlier when I was clicking on that notification button it was like it was showing all these messages like this is too much like we don't want all these messages here you know so the way to handle that is every time you click the send button I want to kill off any existing notification like pop-ups that show up okay so we're gonna call notifi uh, notification dot destroy let me sure let me sure I type that oops no I forgot the end right there didn't I yep all right okay Next thing we want to do is we want to grab that notification uh, object again. And we want to grab it by the type. So you can put in braces type. I'm going to get the, I'm going to pass in the message. And we want the description, I believe. So we're going to pass this in. All right, so we're saying grab the notification object and get its type and pass in a message in the description. And that's it. OK. So that concludes that this helper function here. Won't be needing that anymore. Let's go ahead. Um, it's here in the um, the index file of our helpers. So the only thing you gotta do is go notify. All right. So now um, we can call that notification helper function um, uh, down here in the catch block. So we're gonna go notify. And remember, it takes in a type, so one of the types is error. You can look at the ant design documentation for reference. And I'm just going to put in error. Please try again later. And I'm going to pass in the error message as the description. And that's it for that. 
and all right so we we've handled you know a bad api call to um to our endpoint that we're we haven't that we're going to make later let's handle the mail chip error so what happens if this thing errors out you know so on the api side when we in a future video when we create this we're going to return either a success in the data object or an error in the data object okay so what we need to do is we need to check for let's check for a success so if res response dot data dot success i want you to do something else which means there's an error i want you to do something else what do I want to do if everything is good? First off, I want to notify the user that everything is awesome. Okay, so success, put in some message, subscribe, and put in res.data.message. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to reset the form. So this dot set state, just set the email back to uh, blank, okay? And next we want to do this dot handle loading state, make sure you turn this thing off, turn off the loading state. All right, next uh, we need to handle um, if there is any type of um, of MailChimp error, bad API key, uh, 500, it could be anything, right? Anything other than a 200, okay? So we're gonna go notify, pass in the error key, and we're gonna say, um, uh, you know, um, unable, unable to. All right, and we're gonna pass in that error message. All right, that's that'll be our description. And let's see uh, what actually uh, one other thing we also need to make sure we turn off that that loading state. So set false. Okay. And let's see what happens. It's not gonna work because um, it's not gonna work because of uh, we haven't set the API yet. But you see, it's sending the message. It's doing an error message. You see the state toggling back and forth, and you see it's loading up that spinning icon thing. And if we go here. Okay, I actually, uh, I just realized I actually have the API up and running on my back end. So it's, it's actually, um, return the, um, it's actually returned 200, but status is 401. So, um, that's fine, but everything's working. Everything's still working good. I mean, if I try to do this, if I type in a bad, like, um, route or something like that right there you go now it's doing uh, error there you go so there you go uh, I believe uh, that is it I was uh, one other thing before I, I end this video um, I added the prop types um, I said earlier I wasn't going to, but I went ahead and did it. I did it assuming that you have the latest version of React. So I installed the prop types package. Um, and I just did my prop types checking here. Um, I do need to get my linter um, activated here in this project. I don't know why it's not. It's working here, but not in the code. So I need to get my, my linter, my ES, my... Um, the ESLint source file in here. Um, 
so yeah, I just wanted to throw that note out there that the prop types, I did put it in here. Um, so yeah, it's there. Um, all right, uh, I believe that is uh, it for the front end. Um, we're going to uh, change gears in the next video and we're going to be moving on to the uh, the node side. It's not, it's not a, a whole lot. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, so yep, we're going to be doing some node and some restify in the next video. So just, um, you know, hang around and uh, stay tuned for the next video.